Now let's talk briefly about perceptual development. And you'll read in your textbook about the perceptual abilities of neonates or newborn children, of infants and older children. And this is fascinating information, and I do want you to read it, but I'm not going to ask you to memorize the age at which a child is able to do this or a child is able to do that in the context of perceptual development. Instead, here we're going to focus on how do we know what the child perceives at varying ages? What are the research procedures that one might use to essentially step into the perceptual world of a neonate, newborn, or an infant without language, or even a non-human animal? One of these techniques is the preference test. Here the basic idea is if there's a preference then the child or little animal can distinguish between multiple items or multiple objects. This should help clarify it. When I was a graduate student in New York City, I needed to earn money. And so having research experience, I worked as a research consultant at New York Hospital Cornell Medical Center on a March of Dimes project with two-year-old infants. And one of the things that I did in that position was to conduct preference testing. That was in the days before computers. I'm old. I like being old. But basically, I would have a screen, a white screen, and I would use a slide projector. And I would ask the person who brought in the child to sit with the child on her or his lap facing the screen. And with the slide projector, I would present two images for each trial. Each pair of images would be shown for 10 seconds and I would stand there with a stopwatch and record the length of time that the child looked at these images. If the child showed a preference for looking at one image versus the other, then I could assume that the child could distinguish or tell the difference between the two images. If you use this procedure for a child of about one or two months of age and present, say, a checkerboard pattern, black and white squares, versus a gray square, what you're likely to see is that the child will look more at the checkerboard pattern across all the trials, even if the checkerboard is sometimes on the left of the screen and other times on the right of the screen. Most children do prefer to look at the checkerboard pattern because it has areas of high contrast compared to a very dull looking gray square. But when you see this preference, it means that the child can distinguish between the two images and children can do this typically about one to two months of age. A second technique to be able to step into the perceptual world of a human child who's not yet able to speak or a non-human animal is the habituation dishabituation test. Now I'm presenting one stimulus at a time. So imagine that I am working with a child of about four months being held by one of the parents so that the child is facing a screen and I'm presenting images on that screen and recording the length of time that the child looks at the image. Imagine that I am presenting an image of a human face on the screen and recording how long the child looks at it. And I am repeatedly presenting the image of the same face over and over and over to the child. What do you think will happen? The child is going to stop looking at it you'll see less and less time that the child gazes at that image of a face. In fact, after several trials, what you typically see is that the child will just glance quickly over at the image, see that it's the same, and then look away. This process is called habituation. The child has habituated to this particular image of a face. Now you present a different face on the screen. And if the child shows dishabituation, then you can assume that the child can distinguish between the two faces, which typically happens in human children about four months of age. As I suddenly change the face on the screen to a different face, the child is likely to stare at that face for the total trial of 10 seconds and for additional trials. Now, if you think about it, this is logical. If the child is habituated to a visual stimulus and then shows dishabituation when that stimulus is changed, what you can assume is that the child can detect the difference between the two images. And that is the habituation dishabituation procedure that I want you to know. Habituation dishabituation procedures have been used with only a day or so old. You need to modify the procedures a little bit, but 
habituation dishabituation procedures have shown that newborns can tell the difference between voices. To test newborns or neonates, researchers have placed sensing devices in the nipples of bottles. If there are no sudden noises or anything happening in the room, then the newborn will suckle the bottle at a steady rate. Or if listening to a voice that doesn't change over time, the child will suckle the nipple of the bottle at a steady rate. However, if the voice changes to that of another person, the suckling rate will change. And this indicates that the child can distinguish between the two different voices. Another interesting type of study that was not habituation dishabituation showed that newborns could recognize the mother's face and would in fact suckle at a particular rate to be able to hear the voice of the mother being presented. I'm going to ask you to know how preference tests and habituation dishabituation tests are conducted and the types of questions they can answer, but not the ages at which children demonstrate different abilities. Also, on the screen, you can see that I've put a third type of psychological test, the visual cliff. I love reading about visual cliff studies, and you might enjoy it as well, but I'm not actually going to test you on that.